Wabba laba dub dub. Haha. How's everyone doing tonight? Affordable desert livings in the house. What's up, Dan? Hope. What? How to turn my volumes down. Don't forget to turn your volumes down. Well, you. <laughs> not, not you. You guys are fine. Don't turn your volumes down. <laughs> uh, how are you doing tonight? How are you doing tonight? Who? You. Me? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> man, today was a weird day, though. I don't know. Why was today so weird? It was like, I was kind of low energy today. And it was kind of cold all day. But it was sunny. It was sunny. So how can you be low energy? It's cold. <laughs> and then, like, things I was afraid of that. going I was afraid wrong. Of that. Oh, hang on. You're getting ahead of me here. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You talk. You're right. Uh, <laughs> things have been going wrong. We'll get into that. We'll get into what a mess, what a show it was today. <laughs> Hi, Junior P. Seems like everything was going wrong. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Arizona Homestead Project. What's Ooh. up, everyone? Awesome. Simply Pam, Midlife Prices. Everyone's in the his ales. Robin Lanter, good evening. Geeky Gardens, what's up? Dennis, uh, did we have severe winds? Oh, man. Today? Yes. Yeah. And it's weird. We were looking at the like weather at our weather app, and it was saying like the winds were light all day, and they clearly were not. Yeah. Like, man, yeah, they did. Yeah, I don't know how intense they were, but they were they were strong. Not as bad as it was the past couple of days, but they're still pretty strong. You could still hear them howling and stuff like that. Um, but man, maybe I'll just get into it. I'll just get into like, yeah, I mean the wind. That was that's been a, that was a crazy problem like this past few days. Um, and like that that stopped us from doing some bag work the other day. Like one, it was cold and cloudy and you didn't want to be out there at all, right? <laughs> so I mean it wasn't hard to convince her not to be out there doing bag work. But um but the winds, the winds is what really stopped us because now that we're up a little higher, it's gonna be a precarious position for you. Yeah. Cause you either have to be climbing up and down uh the a stool or being up on the wall. But either way, you're hanging out. You got to hang. You would have to literally hang on to that stand in order to keep it from toppling over with those winds. Yeah, the bag stand. So it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. I mean, you, yeah. so I was like, maybe we should hold off doing the bags today. And you were like, I'm fine with that. <laughs> but the winds have been so crazy. Let me tell you this. The center, the pole compass that we have on there, I think it was just being rocked oh. by those crazy winds. Uh, Farpoint Station, thank you very much thank for the super chat. It does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing a compost, a, like a bucket compost system, you just have TP in there, it'll all break down. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Um, but yeah, I think that center pole, the pole compass was being rocked by all those winds and we were out there. I was like, Jess, can you take some pictures of me? And she's taking pictures of me, my hands full of cob. I don't know if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, but I put a picture on there. I'm hands full of mud. She's taking pictures of me and I'm looking, I'm just looking off to the side. I'm like, uh that pole compass isn't looking straight up and down it's like <laughs> leaning off to the side i'm like that's like, not good like how long has it been like that <laughs> we've been building but i yeah, think it's like, just recent from i'm then. like yeah uh did you notice this pole compass being <laughs> like that she's like no yeah how long has it been like that uh 
and I, and I, yeah, I was like, ah, the wind, it must have just kind of blown it off. And when I looked down at the, because we have it secured, that center pole that's secured to the OSB through that um, floor flange. And when I looked, it's like, it must have been rocking that pole because I think it pulled, I think it pretty much pulled the screws up on out of the OSB. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't even screw them back in because I think those screws just kind of like wore out those holes in the OSB. So I had to actually like take the compass up, switch the uh, floor flange around so I could drill it back in. So that's crazy. So I think we really need to get those walls built up to buffer the, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> to buffer that soul, uh, pole compass from the wind. Nathan Jane says, once you get those sandbag houses built, you won't be bothered by wind again. Kind of jealous. Yeah. That yeah. would be nice. Oh man. I can't even tell you. The wind is really bad just because living in an RV like this, I mean, it's shape. It's sh- yeah. You can feel it. You can feel every little <laughs> gust. Then once we get this house built, like, oh, it's windy. We need to get a break from the wind. You just go inside. You probably won't even hear it or feel it or anything. Be like, what? What's going on out there? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I had to fix the pole compass. That was lame. But then the pole compass ended up going completely out of commission. I'll tell you. Uh, so I was trying to adjust the pole compass because after I got it straightened out, the uh, the little clamp started sliding down. It must have loosened up or something like that. So I couldn't adjust it and tighten it down. So I'm thinking, man, I got to uh, adjust. I gotta I gotta try and get this off and see if I can't find something where I can kind of tighten that in. So I ended up trying to loosen it up. But then as I was loosening up the bolt, uh, the nut from the bolt, the whole bolt just snapped in half. Can you believe that? So now the pole compass is completely useless until I can get another bolt the size to fit through there. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Don said that he uh, had a, a tent workshop shed he anchored it down with six cinder blocks and it ended up being blown 200 feet down into the field. And it's all bent up and cracked. Uh, it's terrible. That sounds like a, our greenhouse episode years back. The wind just picks yeah. things up and tears them up. It's right there. Can you? Oh, is that? Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Don. That's crazy. Uh, So why do you think you're so uh, low energy? I don't know. Uh, I think uh, someone have a, a, so you have a request. Uh, Just, uh, I don't know, you can let us know what it is or send us an email or something like that. Let us know what your request is. Oh yeah, Uh, is that Michael? What's up, North Star Prep Setter? Bob getting on Homestead and getting started on Homestead and what's up? Yeah, I don't know what your request is. You can put it down here or shoot us an email or something like that. Ah. Uh...
you say a funny scaffold Frodo Davis said yeah we uh we've been kind of looking at scaffolding options yeah right? uh we're not quite sure exactly what we might do I don't know if we're gonna get like a traditional type of scaffolding one of the issues I think uh, especially with like regular scaffolding is, you know, it goes straight up and down where there's the dome will kind of curve in. Uh, so we're, we're looking at different options. Plus like regular scaffolding is pretty expensive. I mean, we'll do what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Not saying we won't. <laughs> um, oh. Jack Myers, was there a yeah. question from Jack Myers? Well, I see, uh, su suggested a video on scaffolding. See how they use scaffold to go around your sandbag. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. How far up do you have to go with the sandbags before putting the dome on? Well, technically, you, we're, we're working on the dome right now. The whole thing is a dome. So it right now, it looks like it's going straight up, but we're kind of gradually moving the bags in, so it's going to create a dome. So it probably won't be too visually evident until we get a little further up, and then I'll start curving more. Difference in the house. What's up, y'all? Hey. <laughs> uh, you actually, You actually started moving the bags in slightly and one of the things uh one of the things that we're going to bring up in a video is we almost act we actually went a little too far right we already yeah actually the we bags? actually brought the bags in a little too far right uh maybe i mean not that it's a big deal but we had it i mean it's a, like an inch you wouldn't be able to notice it Otherwise, but since you're measuring it so carefully, it's like an inch too far, which we should be at like the four foot level. And we're not quite at the four foot level, mm. right? Right. So you're because uh, I think what was the cause of that? It was just like you weren't sure exactly how far out those bags get tamped, right? Yeah. I mean, we're used to using the smaller bags and they... Uh, tamp out a little differently than the the bigger ones so you're kind of like adjusting it like it adjusting like, the bags to the pole compass but when i tamped it out it was just like a little too yeah. far so like right now we have to just kind of keep moving the bags up straight until we get to the four foot level and i think then we can kind of start bringing it in again right yeah so not a huge deal in fact the the things get moved in so slightly it's not a it's not an issue and thank you, Nathan, for the super chat. He says, I really enjoy seeing your projects and love your work ethic. You guys are inspiring. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Don says he's got a 100-foot septic trench. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Don, you know I'm always up for some digging. <laughs> oh, and Le Leo Wolf. Thank you for the super chat as well. And yes, um says we have 100% uh, loamy sand. Do you mm. recommend clay or concrete for stability? Um, I've read that with sand, usually um, like a cement stabilizer works well with, with that. If you have the sand, uh, you might be good with going with a cement stabilizer. Might even be like, I don't know what, Getting clay, clay might be kind of expensive if you need to like. Oh, like buying that. clay. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you can find something. Or like natural or something free, like that. Free, maybe. So our our uh, soil out here is like thirty percent clay, seventy percent sand, and that works well for us. Yeah, and we've just been using that straight subsoil for the bags. It's been working out really nice. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty happy. Does he ever get moved? You just keep him there, don't you? It looks kind of scary tonight. So <laughs> looming, looming over, looming over us. Oh, can you uh, do your thing? Oh, 
the uh, her hotspot off and just like turns off by itself. We're trying to work with multiple screens here. Okay, Rebecca. I think because right, cause we've been doing um, we've been doing lives just strictly from my phone, which has been working out pretty well, no complaints. But I want to try the hotspot again and see if I can do the lives using the computer. I think that would be better than the phone. Uh, we were recently lucky enough to take part in that uh, Waterwise um, brown bag brown bag lunch series, talking about our Earth bag cistern. Yeah, that was yesterday. That was yesterday, and we were able to do that fine using my phone as a hotspot and then do that Zoom. So it might be cool to try that out again, try the hotspot out and see if we can't go live from the computer. What are your thoughts? Yeah, might be worth a try. What do you think about that? Uh, What'd you think about that brown bag lunch series? Did you have fun doing that? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, I just want to say uh, when we, um, the WaterWise program from the University of Arizona, they're going to edit that, edit that whole conversation and then put it up on their YouTube channel. I think we will um, we'll probably uh, rank that somewhere. So you guys can see that if you're interested. Uh, let me just say a phenomenal job from this lady. Upside of downsizing. What's up, y'all? Uh, she put together this whole uh, PowerPoint presentation. She had everything <laughs> ready to go. We figured out how to do a screen share on it. So I think it turned out really well. And, you know, I was just there for color commentary, basically. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a, basically a conversation where we kind of detail uh, the bill, the cost, and everything like that. Of our cistern. Of the cistern. So that was fun. Yeah. And now I'm, I started working on a little ebook, uh, kind of going into a little more depth on that whole build and our motivation behind it and how we did it all. So hopefully I'll get that out soon. Uh, different said did you close the store envy shop the link isn't working but then don said he just checked it it should work so i don't know this will be something to look into yeah, thanks for well, bringing it to our attention i'll have to check yeah we'll double check that and uh they also asked will the dome need any temporary support as you go up Nope, that's the cool thing about it. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I think a lot of people have been bringing up like, oh, are you going to have some kind of structure that will kind of hold the bags up while you build and stuff like that? But the way it works, it should be all self-supporting even while you build it. You know, because it's just so slight to get through a certain point and then it starts to uh, get uh, come in a little closer, uh, moves in further the higher up you go. But uh yeah, it should work just completely fine. No support. We just build one course on top of the other. I think uh, another question that I was getting, like, how are you going to tamp it as you get higher? But it should just be uh, tamp in just like on the lower levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just tamp it and like normal. Of course, I don't think I've ever tamped a dome that high. I've done some bag tamping before, but never that high. So it should be interesting. You know, I get... I get a little vertigo when I get higher. Ooh. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to have you go up there and do that, that tamping. Mm -hmm. Do you get vertigo? Mm -hmm. You're not scared of heights, right? Well, not, not unreasonably scared. I think it's a reasonable. <laughs> I'm not scared of heights, but yeah, I get that I'm vertigo. I'm afraid of falling from third heights. Okay, I'll catch you. That's what I'm here for. For you to land. So you're not going to put steel bars through bags down on top. Um, well, we might have to do something a little different when we get up to where we're planning on putting a loft area and we might be putting eaves also on the outside so 
uh, that area might need a little extra support. Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking about putting in a bond beam and that uh, that might require some like rebar and, and things there. Um, but otherwise, um, it shouldn't need like extra support. Yeah, so the bond beam is something that we've been considering. That was a new thing you kind of brought up because if the fact that if you want if we want to do a loft, you're thinking of going with the bond beam. So that was kind of a new thing you're thinking about that we might have to yeah. kind of work out the details on that. So normally, like you put in a bond beam where a wall meets the roof on a house, but with a dome, you don't really have a roof. It's all <laughs> or it's all one thing. But I think usually it's a good idea to have something like that that kind of like ties everything together and like forms one solid like ring to stabilize that area. That might be a good thing for us to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm back. I'm back on the chat. Yes. Welcome back. Just ask when are you okay. anticipate anticipating a move-in date? Oh man, I wish I knew the answer to that. Um, man, I don't know. Uh, I personally, I don't think we can. I don't think I want to wait until the house is complete before we kind of start moving things in, moving things in, and kind of living in there and stuff like that. I mean, we can't say we can't do like everything in there. But it might be a good, nice place to kind of like chill, kind of hang out and stuff like that throughout most of the day or something like that. Maybe even sleep. Yeah, we um, can probably start like transiting in and still use the RV for some things until, you know, everything's finished. Maybe this RV becomes like our kitchen or something like that. Just like our, yeah, our kitchen and bathroom until the, the second dome gets done. Because I don't think I want to like wait until the whole house is complete before like actually kind of like starting to kind of live in there and stuff like that. Cause I mean, why not take advantage of that? Right. I mean, you'll have a, we'll have one whole dome yeah, and under storage space. So plenty of living space. MHS, do you have to search your property for your perfect dirt mix? Uh, I remember we like tested a bunch of different areas around the property. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're all like adequate. But I, the area right where we're building is was really good. Yeah. Uh, so I think all the areas around here were particularly have a decent amount of clay. I mean, we did all the tests, right? And you did like the ball test, the sausage test. Oh, that sounds kind of dirty. <laughs> Excuse me, but these are actual tests. Okay. And the jar. <laughs> and jar. the jar test. Uh, really good clay content, really good for building. I think one of the things you noticed was that uh, a lot of different colors from different areas. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, all of them were pretty decent for building. Yeah, see, North Star Prep Center says just getting in there and even sleeping yeah. during the summer. Yeah, yeah I that think that'd be, be good. It might be good for you, too. I think you'll enjoy that. It, maybe that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why you get such low energy is maybe this isn't the best sleeping. Yeah, I don't think so. And the, the, this mattress isn't great either. Mm -hmm. uh, Gerald asked, why use individual bags and not the continuous bags? Why are we using? Yeah, good question. That's a good question. Uh, one reason is cost and availability. Um, we were really looking for a certain size bag and it was hard to find the continuous bags in the size that we needed. We need them kind of wide. Um, and we were able to find misprinted uh, pack of like grain, old grain bags. Uh, which were misprinted. And so we got them at a pretty good price. And 
uh, we feel pretty good about using that too because we're like reusing a material that would probably just get disposed of yeah. and putting it to like a permanent use. Instead of like buying a roll that they specifically made for <sighs> for building that, you know, it'd be much more expensive. And, and like you said, I think the the widest, I don't know if you've seen any different, but I think the widest I've seen was like 18 inches. Yeah, and we were really looking for 24. So we need something a little closer to 24. That way we would get the um, the width we need to do the dome size. Mm-hmm. Bill and Neil, thank you very much thank for the super you, chat. Um, yeah, because bag size, that bag width is super important depending on how big of a dome you want. Tony's in the house. What's up, Tony? Any update on the gutters? Mm, uh, mm, did I detail that about the that I got the rest of the old ones down? Did I make a video? Might have mentioned that. That's yeah, they are down. As far as the old ones. So now there's no hazard above our heads. <laughs> um, but nothing, nothing. I haven't put anything up yet. I'm still working out the kinks. I want this thing to be 100% ready to go when I do it. That way we don't have to mess with it again. Uh, I'm trying, I think I've detailed out the problems of my original gutter setup. And I'm working on fixing those so that we don't get those leaks that we did last time. We're hoping like this next monsoon season will be awesome and be able to catch a lot of water. Mm -hmm. What's up, Jay? Yeah. Okay. So the, yeah, I said, yeah, we took them. Yeah, I finished taking them down. Uh, no change yet. We've been really trying to hammer out some of the stuff, like keep on with the build. That's the most important thing right now is keep working on the build. And I'm going to work on the gutters kind of in the meantime. Yeah. We've got a little time before the rainy season. Mm. So on uh, junior PS uh, about your mom. Yes. Uh, hey, Denise, how's it going? Um, we got some good news today. Yeah. So we've been trying to video call her as much as we can. Uh, sometimes it's been difficult, but now that she had her own um, iPad, my brother was able to get her iPad to her. So now it's a little easier. You know, she doesn't have to share an iPad with the whole facility, one iPad for the whole facility. <laughs> uh, so we've been able to kind of communicate a little bit more with her. So we called her today and fantastic news. Uh, she had a swallowing test and she passed flying colors. So she, she like, she literally had a lunch today of like meatloaf and potatoes and then I think they gave her a few potato chips. So <laughs> she's, she's probably pretty happy. I'm about sure that. <laughs> she was. Eating. They spoiled her. They spoiled her. So that is fantastic. Um, I think she still she still has the the tubes uh, going into her nose. I think they might be leaving that for a little bit until they're sure everything is working really well. But um, so I mean, she can talk. A lot better she's not definitely not a 100 percent, but you can you can almost understand everything she's saying still a little raspy but she's talking pretty well so i mean that's fantastic she's making progress with her voice and her throat just about every day oh thank, oh, thank you, you very much for the, thank you very much for the super chat Kubo with me that i will do <laughs> Uh, so that is fantastic news. She, I still don't know how long she's going to be in this facility from what they've, they've been telling me is that she's going to need to be able to stand fairly well on her own before she can leave. So that's the really big thing, critical part now for her to just be out of the facility and done with this whole thing is building up that strength. Don Juan asks, what are the average highs and lows temperatures for your homestead? Um, Good question. 
at the temperature is the temperature swings crazy between day and night i mean it's the desert oh, here yeah. uh so it those... could be as much as like 30 or 40 degree difference between day and nighttime temperatures it's wild so like summers uh I would say, I mean, we get temperatures above 100, but average summertime temperature is probably like in the 90s. And winter, um, I mean, winter can get below freezing. So right now we've had temperatures in the early morning, like high 20s, low 30s, um, but daytime temperatures are usually like 50s, 60s. Yeah. A neighbor of ours said it just perfectly. In this particular area, your relationship to the sun changes between summer and winter. So in the summer, it is hot and you want to get out of that sun. So you're working more like in the mornings and the evenings. But those nighttime temperatures are in the summer are perfect, perfect yes. sleeping weather. It is beautiful. Uh, I love the summer nights here. Yeah, we just open up the windows and we sleep really well. Yeah. Now in the winter, it's the exact opposite. You want to be out there during the, the warm the, part you want to be out there in the sun, hanging out there in the mornings and evening as it gets pretty cold mm -hmm. and you got to bundle up at night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's but not so overall, bad it's pretty mild. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, you know I'm sure there are probably nicer areas with temperature in parts of the country but you can't complain this is one of the best for yeah. sure i can't complain joe bem asks are you going to garden over the dome that would be awesome i kind of wanted like a live have a living roof or something over that um i'd worry about like, having to water our roof because uh we do have a pretty dry climate here. I guess we could like maybe put in some natural uh, plants or something like native plants. Yeah, if but... we if we were in a wetter climate, that might be better. But in this climate, it's probably best not to do quite a, not to do a living roof because you know, we'd have to water it. It would be kind of water intensive, and I don't think that dome being so high up with the wind and being exposed oh. to the wind and the sun. It would yeah, probably just dry that out super quick. It might be exposed to some kind of harsh uh, <laughs> weather. Yeah. Uh, I think we had a couple of questions here on gabions or gabions. Uh, Lady Lopez asked, do you guys on plan on doing any more gabion projects? I'm working on mine. I think they're neat. And then Jay asks, on your post for the carport structure, did you bury the post in the ground or the gabion, gabions just hold it down? I'll talk about both of them. We're going to... We will absolutely be doing more gabions. Uh, that's gonna. That's probably we're gonna be constantly building those out here. Don't, don't you think? Yeah, <laughs> we have less racks. So and that's... I think I think down at the bottom of the dome, uh, we'll probably be doing a, gab a gabion right around that whole thing, just to, for like a little base. Uh, keep everything tight around the bottom, mm -hmm. and maybe a little give a little step up. So probably doing that. And then, yeah, about the uh, the carport, the posts are not buried into the ground. I have we I have pier uh, concrete piers that I put down there into the ground. Probably probably not the best way. I wouldn't recommend doing this. <laughs> but I buried concrete piers down there, and then I put extra concrete around the piers, so they're big kind of concrete blocks on this so those are buried but the posts are not buried the posts are attached on top of the piers and then yeah the gabions and go gabions go around some of those posts and we haven't had any issues yeah it seems to be anchored pretty well um joseph asks can you tell us more about how the earth and floor will work curious about what your vision is yeah so we have plans for the the lower levels, the low ground. Again. You keep talking. I'm going to turn on that light. Yeah, it's a little I was, dark. I was wondering, like, why is it so dark? I think we're missing <laughs> that light. Um, the lower levels will be, like, all earth and floor. And 
Yeah. Oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> the upper left, do you have the wood floor going around part of it, but then like the outer edge is going to have an earthen floor. Uh, Hugh isn't as scary <laughs> anymore. Are you sure? So little. Um, so basically what we have planned is it's going to have a gravel layer and then a layer of straw kind of for insulation and kind of um, like a straw rich adobe over that for a finish and then it'll probably have some kind of foil or something to to seal it and make it nice and smooth. Oh, there's a delay on the uh, image over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the upside down side is like, let there be light. Yeah, I know, right? I was like, why is that so dark? It's not usually this dark in there. Uh, man, I'm excited about that earthen floor. I can't wait to try that out. Uh, I was so I was like so excited. I'm like, earthen floor? Yeah, just shovel a bunch of dirt in there, done. <laughs> and she's like, no, there's a process Hold to up. it. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could do that, but no, nah, it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be right. Is land going up in price since COVID in your area? Well, it definitely has gone up yeah. since we purchased land. Yeah, I don't know if it's due directly to COVID, but every time I hear about land, um, there's a guy that we know, a friend does. Um, is a realtor and he specializes and he kind of specializes in the off-grid property around here. Uh, I think he's been saying they've been tough to come by, but you can still get them. But yeah, I think land prices have been going up. So if you find a deal, snag it. <laughs> but yeah, that's crazy. Uh, you know, It's, it's going to be, it's definitely got to consider, like, man, I just hear so much about, like, the groundwater getting sucked up. Uh, so many, like, we were just talking about in that, um, in our, that seminar we had yesterday, you know, we were just reading an article the other day mm -hmm. about, you know, just these wells had been drying up, the water levels have been dropping. So, yeah, man, I got to focus on that what rainwater harvesting. I think that's the way to go. Unless you got money to put that well, it's like super deep. I mean, you do definitely like if you're looking for property, be aware of what's around there. I mean, if you yeah. got a lot of these, because of like there's a lot of these agricultural parcels around here. And they have the money to <laughs> dig really deep wells mm -hmm. and uh, they use a lot of water. So, I mean, I'd be super nervous. I was up there in Wilcox. I think around Wilcox area, I, I keep hearing complaints about the wells mm -hmm. there. When is your next monsoon season? Um, we get most of our rain in July. July is usually when it, really when it starts. starts coming down. I mean, technically, I think like okay, we could get them in June, but I don't think I've ever seen June rains yet. Not a, not a ton. Yeah, if it is, it's just a sprinkle. Yeah, this one, this uh, all property in AZ has gone up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you guys need help? uh we always need help but uh <laughs> we haven't had too many people come out here yet i mean with the we got the pandemic going on so we're always a little cautious about that plus we don't know what we're doing out here so <laughs> but if we ever have a workshop we'll definitely let people know how tall will the dome be it should be just over 20 feet high by the time we're done mm -hmm. So the, the diameter is 20 feet wide, well, the interior diameter, and over 20 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you do a crew cam yet? We haven't done a crew cam yet. <laughs> He's born right now. <laughs> He's so cute. Crew. <laughs> what you doing? You sleeping? No. 
<laughs> he just, I called his name and then he was like, <laughs> he popped open his one eye to see what was going on. <laughs> oh, you're so adorable. <laughs> He's adorable. <laughs> Let the creep out. What's your elevation? Uh, we're about 4,300 feet. We're up there. Ascension Ranch says water depths here are averaging thousand feet deep near Grand Canyon. Oh, wow. Didn't you uh, say something similar? Was it you I heard that from? Or no, maybe I wasn't. Well, or did you say something about some areas being like thousands of feet deep? Yeah. Well, we were just, we were talking to Marianne from the Water Watch program. And she's, was she the one that said she that? She said something about, um, she was talking to someone that, Said like four thousand feet somewhere. Oh, you don't remember where? Uh, no. Yeah, it was some like four thousand feet. I was like, what? So those people have to, you know, do rainwater harvesting or get their water hauled in. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Neal asked, "How much water was in that last delivery? And how much did they charge you? You guys are so awesome." <laughs> So that truck, I think that truck can hold 4,000 gallons, but they don't always bring that back here. I think it was around 3,000. Uh, for some reason, they have a, a station there that they have to go through and get weighed. So I don't think they can bring a full truckload of water because of that weigh station. It's like a mandate that they have to go through there before they come up here. So that uh, not only adds cost because they have to go around that way to get weighed, so it takes more time and it adds more cost. Uh, so it's about thousand gallons, and I think it ended up being what two hundred forty? Did I say mm -hmm. about two hundred forty dollars? Not the best price. So like I said, uh, they 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 don't charge for the water; it's just for the time. And I think one time we got a delivery of about three thousand gallons, and I think it ended up being like ninety bucks. <laughs> Cause it took like an hour to get to and from her. So like the quicker you can get them in and out, the better it is for you. Are you guys going to start a small worm operation to avoid chemicals and put your garden in overdrive? I would love to. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is that is such a huge goal. I really want to start uh, growing some worms. I know, like you want to. <laughs> well, you got a whole uh, bathtub, cast iron bathtub, right? That you wanted to like make a worm farm in. Did we decide? Can are you letting me use that for that? No, I want <laughs> I want that. Okay, well, yeah. I want that for the house. No, yeah, then you could totally use it for that. Whatever you want to use it for. I mean I, I didn't think I didn't think you were gonna let me use it for that. I might have to find another one. Uh worms are we've done uh small like worm farms before and it's great. Mm -hmm. Um we also tried uh soldier fly larva, which uh I wanna try again you know, after the house is built and stuff. Definitely going to be doing more with that. Uh, Don got his first delivery, drinkable water, 1,600 gallons, $247. Nice. Uh, different asks, have you made any new art lately? Uh, mm, <laughs> I think not, not recently. Yeah, we've been no. pretty busy. Um, like yeah, I'm constantly time. tied up on projects and you're, you're always busy doing everything. Well, Not only are you helping yeah. out with the house build, but then you got, uh, some other projects going on. Plus like oh, there's always, always cleaning stuff. things. I feel like the editing videos for me is my biggest editing creative videos. outlet lately. Yeah. You, you absolutely, I mean, 
what do you guys think? I think she's been, I think she's knocking that editing out of the park. If I film better, then she would have more to work with. But I do all the filming, so <laughs> it's like you ain't you ain't giving me nothing to work with over here. Uh, David asks, are there any places nearby where you can fill water containers for free, minimal prices? Yeah, we could actually we could actually go to the place that we get the water delivered from and actually get the water ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we would need like something to put the water in and like a trailer or something like that. But that might be a way we go in the future. I mean, if we, you know, I think a trailer would be nice to have in general, but then you throw in a couple IBC totes, get those things filled, haul it back. We could pump it into wherever, you know, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> oh, look at that, the compliments. <laughs> How about making a floor from wooden pallets? You get them for free and can make a floor with access underneath. Yeah, um, we do have pallet wood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we might actually be using some of that uh, maybe for the loft area and uh possibly using like scrap wood things for um finishing our wood floor that we the osv floor mm -hmm. uh the epic tiny house what's up sherry how you doing tonight sherry. how much land have you got for your property we have 40 acres Got some room to stretch out in. Fun shots of crew being the boss. He is, oh man. I was attacked by crew the other day. That's not fun. You might see that in the next video, Saturday's video. Did you get that on? I might have got that on film. <laughs> well, you could at least hear me screaming, if anything. If you want to hear me if you want to hear me scream like a little girl, watch uh Saturday's video. Uh, Carol Austin says, have you got any neighbors? We got neighbors around here. But they, uh, what do you think, about a half mile away? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Not too close. But I guess if you wanted to, like, if we wanted to use binoculars, we could spy on them. <laughs> yeah, not super close. Um, yeah, about a half mile away. It's not too bad. If you walk down the road a little bit, you can see them. Mm -hmm. uh, Jess asks, I just tuned in. Will you be setting up an art area? Oh, yeah. What do you have envisioned for that? Um, well, I was thinking maybe the loft area be a good area for that um and maybe in the future we do some more like smaller outbuildings that might be like a studio space or something yeah that could be cool uh you've been uh, uh david says that uh he likes your voiceover work now i don't know what you guys think but she did this video like a while back. It was that like starting a permaculture garden. It was all done by Jess. I think I'd like to see another video like that. where you just kind of like <laughs> take it from beginning to end. You, you haven't done one of those in a while. It'd be kind of interesting to see. Yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> she's just, she, doesn't like, she doesn't like being the focal point of the yeah. video. She just likes to pop in, hood up. <laughs> <laughs> and then get out of there she doesn't like you're, you're more comfortable behind the camera behind right now the behind the scenes so i gotta get out there and do my dancing <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay jay says where the dirt is backfilled to your subfloor did you in insulate and put a vapor barrier 
where the dirt meets or touches the floor. Seems like your floor could rot or get cold. So, so far we just backfilled with gravel, which will help with drainage. And then um, uh, after everything's built and stuff, we'll fill that in. So we might have to, you know, add some kind of barrier or mm -hmm. something at that time. Yeah, but so far, I think where we, where we have it now, yeah, yeah, that water, like water should reach out and rot that wood. What? I got a gravelly singing voice? Oh, <laughs> I thought I had amazing pipes over here. Uh, fruit trees in the future? Definitely. Mm -hmm. We're definitely gonna, that's another project. That's another side project I want to work on is kind of getting some uh, swales measured out, marked out. And kind of designing uh, the food for us. Of course, that's all got to get approved for this lady. She's got to get the final stamp on it. But I can go ahead and like kind of do some design work ahead on that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to have animals? Yes. So, well, right now we have, we just have some chickens, but we'll be getting more animals. Um, in the future, I think next we'll. Obviously, we have to finish our house, and then we might focus a little more on setting up a garden space, and then maybe we'll get some animals, considering maybe sheep. Um, not too interested in anything too big as far as livestock, but and probably more chickens, maybe other poultry or something. Uh, Han30 asks... Uh, are you going to tamp the inside of the dome? And um, if I'm thinking that right, uh, we wouldn't want to tamp, the way I understand is you would not want to tamp these sides of the bags. You don't want to some people do that. Have you? Yeah, I don't know how comfortable I would feel doing that because... Like it might untamp the top. Or yeah, you gotta, yeah, you got to be careful because you don't want to break the the compression from the top because i think that would be a little bit more important than just smashing it in from the side mm -hmm. i think you would have to be careful not to break that compression that's why i would be nervous doing that someone's asked if you have you looked for a trailer on craigslist sometimes you can get uh one for uh free or a few hundred bucks yeah uh we always try and keep an eye on craigslist for deals i don't think we get to look on that as often as we should i probably look more than you do oh you definitely look. i don't look at <laughs> it at all i always check the free section first um but there's like there's not often a lot of free stuff in this area um, we would have to go to like Tucson. There's always stuff in Tucson. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. one thing about like living in a city versus a more uh, rural area. Like the rural is nice. Don't get me wrong. Like you don't have to, you know, it's quieter. You don't have to deal with traffic and Less stuff like resources. that. Less resources. Something you got to weigh mm -hmm. whether you want to live in a city or out somewhere. Chad says, sorry, I'm late. Chad, we're glad you're here. Oh, uh, Junior asks, if you have any pigs, would that be any trouble with the, any problems with the javelinas? Would they get into some kind of scuffle? Hmm. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that. So no, no bad blood between pigs and javelinas <laughs> that you know of? Not that I know of. Uh, Ascension Ranch asks, what variety of fruit trees? Um, I guess the ones that grow well here. I think there's there's some types of apples that can grow here. Uh, Myers lemon. Um, 
Might like to grow some dates if we can. Mm-hmm. Would you take me out for a date? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what else? We we actually had um, someone gave us a couple of pineapple guava trees. Mm. So we're going to be planting those. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else, but. Difference says a camel might be good for us. A camel. You want to get a camel? <laughs> I don't know. Ah. I'm going to be scared of camels. Michael says just grow marijuana. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> we can do that now if we wanted to, I right? Yes, we could. I don't know. I don't know what's all involved in that. I might need a license to grow. any issues with high wind in your area yeah lots of high wind yeah totally uh put a halt to our building progress in a few different ways didn't it yeah oh my goodness we can't have her out in high winds it'll likely blow her away away. (laughs) gotta put uh (laughs) gotta put some steel shoes on her to keep her grounded oh thank you chad well thank you chad (laughs) Uh, <laughs> very generous of you. We appreciate that. You need way too much water to grow marijuana where you live. <laughs> Probably. We haven't, uh, honestly, we haven't looked into it that at all. Living Free says, just found your channel, also working on building an earth bag house in an arid desert climate. Have you thought of how long your project will take from start to finish? We've thought about it. That's going to take a while. Just the two of us. Um, you know, people have been, people will be like, oh, how long is it going to take you guys? Is it going to take you guys forever? Uh, are you going to finish it in my lifetime? <laughs> I mean, it's just the two of us working on building like this, uh, these earth bag domes. Um, like if, honestly, earth bag building can go very quick. And I don't want to give the impression that it can't. If you get like a team of people out somewhere you could probably get like a small dome done in like a couple of days maybe a larger dome done in like a week a couple of weeks or something like that but for us it's gonna take a while because it's just the two of us and <clears throat> we're not like okay, so start, starting and starting <laughs> <clears throat> and there's so many other things going on on the sides you know we're constantly filming editing the videos yeah well i'm okay with our just oh yeah yeah i'm fine with it yeah i'm not trying to rush it or anything like that um so i I think it's probably going to take us a better part of the year did you ever get your truck fixed it's it's all it's running okay now but it's definitely not fully fixed i still want to get the uh i still want to replace the radiator on that so I'll, i'll probably do that um sometime eventually (laughs) did you have to jump through any legal hoops to start your project not really Um, that's part of the reason why we chose the area that we chose to live in was um, it gave us a little more leeway in what we could build and how we could build it without too many legal hoops yeah, that was so that was a big consideration for us. The opt out was super important for what we're doing. Yeah, so we do have to get permits and things, but um, there's not as much that you have to go through to to get that done. Um, got a question. Could you build a dome home, say, like you're like what we're building and bury it? Uh, so you can do. I don't know if I would fully bury an earth bag dome because I don't know what that kind of pressure would do on top of it. But I have seen people do partially buried domes and that might be an option. Honestly, uh, I think that would be a good way to go. Like if, um, because if you partially bury the dome, you know, you take advantage of more thermal mass, uh, more of that earth surrounding it plus then when you're working at the higher levels of the dome you're pretty much starting off from ground level 
So I think that could definitely be an option. Uh, our time is pretty much there. Did you got a, uh, a last question you want to throw out there? You got any questions you want to, we could do one. Jay asked if we can do a live every night. <laughs> I'd love to, but I don't think that's in the cards. You know, no questions. Uh, is most of your land flat? Is it, is... it is fairly flat, but you know, no land, no natural land is ever like really completely flat. There's always like little nuances to it. Let's see. Uh, maybe like a five percent slope or something just very gradual very gradually slope. from the north and south kind of meeting in toward the middle a little bit nothing nothing real uh steep all right well that's our time i don't want i don't like to go over too much i, I don't want to i don't want to take too much of your time <laughs> we could be on all night <laughs> but thanks so much for joining us thank you so much for joining us thank you everyone i always enjoy this time we really appreciate you spending this time with us one hour a week. Maybe we'll do one every night. I don't know. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to our moderators. You can find them. They're always uh, in blue like that. Uh, check them out. They always do such an amazing yes. job keeping these lives running so smoothly. Uh, thanks again, and uh, have a good night, everyone. We'll catch you with on uh, Saturday's video. Bye. Good night.